YouTube, it's Ben here with the 60 gallon cichlid tank and today's topic are five things I'd do differently if I was starting my tank today. So I want to share those with you. Maybe this will save you a little heartache, a little headache, maybe even a little bit of money, okay? All right, here we go. Okay, number one. I'm not one to dwell on um, woulda, couldas, and shouldas, but I'll tell you, if I could do it over again, and start over again, I'd start with a larger tank. This is a 60 gallon, and certainly coming from a 30, it sure felt like a like an upgrade. And I love this 60 gallon tank, but if I was starting over, I would have uh, probably started with a 125, and uh, it would have saved me, uh, I think it, it would have uh, helped me to move faster in my, uh, in my growth in the hobby. So first and foremost, I would have started with a bigger tank. My advice to everybody is get, get the biggest tank you can afford, the biggest tank you can, you can um, fit into the space that you're dedicating to your hobby. So number one, bigger tank. Number two, I love this substrate. I love this uh, shell and coral substrate. But I think in hindsight, I would have probably started off with an um, with maybe a sand or a crushed coral, something that the fish could sift through a little bit more easily. Even though they do move these shells around a lot and the shells do buffer quite well and they help keep my pH nice and high, I think a uh, aragonite or crushed coral or even sand with some coral then in the canister to buffer, I think that would that would be awesome. So I would have started off with a finer, a finer substrate instead of the substrate that I have right now. This substrate I might just put into a 300 micron bag and stick it into a, a canister and that'll help with the buffering. Is what I'll probably end up doing with some of this substrate because I have a lot of it. Because if you remember in my earlier videos, I had two or three inches of substrate and I've reduced it considerably. That way I don't have the uh, detritus, the waste. Uh, build up underneath it and uh, that has brought my my um, I'm actually right around 20 now on my nitrates just to give you an update on that so I think for cleaning purposes also I think a sand substrate and perhaps a power head that uh, helps to move some of the waste that settles on top of the sand towards the intakes of the canister that would be uh, maybe more of an ideal scene for keeping the tank clean Okay, so uh, number three, you know, I love the look of lava rock, but this lava rock, if you look at it on certain, on certain points, in certain places, it has sharp edges. And these uh, cichlids, either uh, by chasing each other or if they get startled, um, you know, you turn the light off or someone walks by the tank unexpectedly, they dart and they dart really quick. And I've had them uh, get uh, scrapes on the sides. I've seen their eyes get injured sometimes. So I would certainly maybe uh, go with a smoother rock, maybe even an artificial rock. I picked up these uh, lava rocks originally because I heard that they could buffer, but they don't. I don't think they really buffer. And in all honesty, I might end up breaking them up and using them in a in a canister because I do hear they're good for uh, for uh, beneficial bacteria development. Okay. Number four. Item number four. You know, when I first got into uh, cichlids, I was going to be that guy that had the mixed tank. Now I'm not. Uh, this is not a knock on you if you have a mixed tank. That's your choice. But I'll tell you something, since, since this tank has become strictly haps and peacocks, except for the pleco and the three clown loaches, since this tank became peacocks and haps, it is a lot more peaceful. And I suspect that it'll be even more peaceful after I separate out the haps, put them in the larger tank that I'm getting set up, and leave the peacocks here in the 60. So. Again, if I was starting over, I would have skipped that whole phase where I had um, mabunas. And I love those mabunas. I had a yellow tail. I had a, I had a, uh, a lab, a yellow lab in here, and a yellow tail, and a chuary. And uh, anyway, I had some really nice little mabunas in here. 
but um, they did get to a point where they started to become a little bit uh, too frisky and uh, started chasing some of the peacocks and getting overly aggressive. So I would have skipped that step and just gone right into haps and peacocks. Last point, uh, point number five, I would have been uh, a bit more aware of and a little bit more aggressive in the creation of uh, surface agitation and been more aware of uh, the O2 requirements of a tank. You can see how much surface agitation I have going on here quite a bit. And uh, I would have uh, been a little bit more aggressive in creating more surface tension breakup and more O2, as those of you know who follow my videos I had a bit of a, a debacle with a O2 at one point. I lost some some fish that were uh, pretty amazing, and um, and you know what that comes back to? That com comes back to more study. And by that, what I mean is I would have um, uh, the final regret number five probably ties into I would have uh, researched and studied a little bit more about the specific uh, requirements of cichlids. And, uh, and and made absolutely sure, and I think I did a pretty good job, but you know, in hindsight, I would have been absolutely sure that I was creating the best possible environment for these fish to thrive. And, uh, but as you, mature, as you mature and you move along in the hobby, uh, you learn, sometimes you learn uh, easily, and sometimes the lessons are expensive. So, uh, Maybe this video will save you a step or two and uh, save you a little bit of money. And uh, that's the intention, okay? So that wraps it up. And uh, be sure to uh, comment, rate, subscribe. And uh, let me know if you like the music at the end of this video. That's, uh, that's my daughter's band, Highland Kites. All right, okay. Thank you so much for tuning in. You guys are all really appreciated. The uh, Facebook page, Ben O'Sicklet, is now... Uh, I believe it just passed uh, 500 members, and I think I'm over 2,300 here on uh, YouTube, so you guys are all very appreciated. All right, thank you so much. That's it for now.